Hello everyone. Let's take a look at this amazing project called the Reverse Perspective Room. It appears that we can see into this 3D looking room, but in actuality, this wall is coming out at us. So if we look again, you'll be able to kind of see it both ways, both with it looking like the wall's coming out at you, and your brain will also allow you to think that the wall is receding and as you kind of tilt and move the room gently, it will look like you can see inside the room. Isn't that amazing? Let's get started. Let's take a look at how to make this. I've created a template for you. If you don't have this template, if you're watching my video and you're interested to learn how, there are a lot of other YouTube videos that teach you how you can set up this room, similar to how you draw a room in perspective, but there are some different additional vanishing points to create these fold tabs. I modified it slightly a little bit as well. For my students, anywhere where you can see these wiggly shapes, this is a do not draw area because these areas will not be seen in your final project. When we look at our space, we have a back wall, a ceiling, floor, and two side walls. I want you to use your imagination and decide where is this space? Is it somewhere in your house? Is it in a make-believe space? Like maybe it's on an alien spaceship. Is it in a library, a museum? Maybe it's even in somewhere like an aquarium. So you can kind of decide where the space is going to be. In the back wall, anything you draw on the back wall can be drawn as you would draw things normally. So if you draw windows, doors, picture frames, those are all going to appear normal in your regular square and rectangle shapes. Anything we draw on the side walls, we'll have to use our ruler. And so if I wanted to put a window over here, I can draw the edge of the window. And then using my ruler, I'm gonna line up from the vanishing point, which is the dot in the center, to both the top and the bottom of that line. Now, I don't want to draw my line the whole way because I'm drawing in Sharpie. And so I'm just gonna pick a point. Try to line it up best I can, there we go. When you will draw, you're going to draw in pencil first. There we go. All right, this could be a picture frame, it could be a window to an aquarium, it could be a window to the outside, and so you can kind of decide what that window is gonna be. Maybe this one I will turn really quick into a window into an aquarium. And make a little happy jellyfish guy and some little fish babies. Sand. There we go. Okay. Same for this wall. If you're going to put, you know, something over here on this wall, whether it's a door, let's maybe put a door over here. The edge of the door is going to be a regular vertical line. The top must match back to the vanishing point. I can make a little short line down, and then the second line is just another vertical line. Door could be closed where you can draw a knob. Door could be open, and it could be going into, again, another hallway, which is kind of a fun way to make your space feel a little bit bigger. The floor, if you wanted to put um, tiles or wood down, you could make a few tick marks along the bottom. These are points where you can match your ruler up with that point. And again, you don't want to draw the floor tiles on the wall, so you're making sure that you stop at that line. You could also put area rugs, tables, maybe there's a portal to a black hole in the middle of your floor. You decide. Ceiling, you could decide what's coming down from the ceiling. Maybe there's a big skylight open to the sky. Maybe there's something coming down from the ceiling. For me, maybe I will just do a ceiling fan. 
say. Now, you're gonna wanna spend a lot of time, do a lot more detail on yours than I have done here. And you'll wanna make sure that it's fully colored before you begin to cut. Let's fast forward to the cutting part. On your template, you can see that there are four inside dashed lines. That is where we need to cut. So basically, we're starting with our scissors and we're getting to the corners where the back wall and the side walls meet. Next step is to fold. First, we're gonna fold each of these four flaps we've Created, and you're going to fold them in and crease them. Next, we're going to fold on this line. Try to do the best you can to line it upright. This paper is thicker, so it is a little tricky to get a fold exactly where you want it. It's kind of looking like a, like a takeout box for a restaurant right now. Next, flip it over, fold all the flaps the other way. This is the way that they're going to be on their final version. And because we folded them once the first time, the second time is so much easier. Yay! There we go. Okay, finally, you will glue the flaps in place. I'm gonna quick put some glue on them. Tape would also work if you don't have glue. We are matching up the edges. You can kind of rub it in place. And notice there is a little part hanging off. We can trim that off next. There we go. And then you can see all of that squiggly part. That is the part that you will cut off. And when you are done, your piece will look something like this. You can put it up on a wall or look at it in a mirror and move yourself as you can see the really awesome illusion. Thanks for joining us.